Excuse the mess, but I'm currently in the middle of installing a home theater here on the channel. Now, if you're installing a home theater, you're probably wondering how do I possibly run all of this speaker wire and signal cable and the HDMI wires, how do I run it all throughout the house for the build? After all, you don't wanna be that guy that just has speaker wire draped all along the ground running everywhere. We gotta keep things clean. In this video, I wanna do a walk around and show you guys some of the tips and tricks that the pros use to make the wire running process a lot more easy. We're gonna talk about the different special tools that you can use, how to run wire behind walls, and more. Now really quick, before we get into talking about what all this crazy stuff is hanging from the ceiling, I do wanna talk about our project sponsor, Crutchfield. When it comes to picking out all of the gear for a home theater project, we of course need to do some research. What I love about the Crutchfield website is all the gear that they sell always has direct links to the product manuals so we can read before we buy and a list of everything that's included so that we can better plan if we need to get extra items. And if we do need help picking out items or with technical support, we can talk to their home theater expert advisors. To learn more about how Crutchfield can help you with your home theater project and to take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, check out the link down in the video description. So first I wanna show you guys some of the different tools of the trade. And then after that, we're actually going to run a speaker wire through a wall. I've already got this side done here. I've got a string here. I'll talk about that in a second. I've got that through, but we need to also do it over here. So we're gonna do that together. So obviously when we're doing a home theater install, there's different types of wire that we need to run through the wall. We might have speaker wire. We might have RG6 cable, which this can be used to make RCA leads or as coaxial cable. And then we have video signal cables like this long HDMI cable. Now this location right here is where I'm planning on having my AV rack with all the amplifiers and the receiver. So that needs to send the signal to the different speaker locations. So obviously we need to go through the walls and ceiling. Now obviously I'm working with a drop ceiling here, which makes things a lot more simple. But even if you have a drywall ceiling, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks. The main thing is it comes down to using these professional grade tools. You've got to use the right tools. And the first tool I want to talk about here, this is a fish tape. So a fish tape is basically inside this reel here, and it's a strong piece of metal that on the end of it right here has a little hole in it. We can extend that piece of metal outside of the reel, and then we can use that little hole on the end to secure a piece of string or a piece of wire in order to pull it back. So where this is obviously handy is we could extend this through a spot like this between the joist in our house and have it go into another room if we're in a basement. You could do the same with drywall by making a small access hole and then fishing your way over into an unfinished part of the basement. There's a lot of different flexibility for this. An advantage of the fish tape is it's flexible, which means that we can curve it around things and we can go through conduit. We'll talk about that in a second, but the disadvantage of a fish tape is that it's flexible. Sometimes there are cases where you want something that is more rigid. In that case, you would use something like this this is, for lack of a better term, called a fish rod. And this one in particular is a glow rod, meaning that you can charge it up with some light. And then with the lights out, the end will glow like this. This is really handy for when you're going through a dark space so that you can find the end of the rod. Now what's nice is in comparison to the fish tape with the fish rod being rigid like this, if we do wanna go through something like a ceiling, we can easily extend. It's not like the fish tape where we're constantly going to get bound up against the ceiling tiles and the supports for the ceiling tiles. With this rigid piece, it's easy to fish down to another room. The rod has different end attachments. This hook one is really handy for snagging this string. We'll talk more about this in a second. And another hook attachment here is a hole. And this way we could pass our rod through to another location and we could attach something like our string to the end. The rods also have a male and female thread. That way you can attach multiple together for longer runs. We're gonna be attaching two together for when we do our hole in the wall and run our speaker wire. The other thing that's really nice about these fish rods is they work really well for going through insulation if we kinda of need to poke and feel our way through a wall cavity. Let's talk more about this string because this isn't normal string. This is more specialized for the application of pulling wires. 
So first off, you can get this string and they call it polyline. You can get it in a container like this. And what's nice about this is imagine that we were in a room over here and we were fishing our fish tape through to another room or to another side of the wall. We can have this on the other side. And once we've fished through, we could tie to our fish tape or our fish rod with the string. And what's nice about this container is it pulls out of the container nice and clean. If you were using a normal bundle of string, it has a tendency to kind of bounce around and move around and it might get stuck on something as you're pulling it, which is a huge pain. This string always comes out real smooth. The other really nice feature about this string is the tensile strength. 210 pounds on this particular string, which means you can really give this a good pull in order to get it through conduit or get it through wherever you need to. Depending on the application, sometimes you'll fish over with your tape or your rod and you might connect the wire directly to this and just pull it back. But other applications, it is nicer to first connect the string and pull it back to your spot. Then you have a connection between your two locations with the string. You can then tie the string to your wire, a couple of wraps of electrical tape so it's good and strong and pull it through. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. But the other really good thing about using string is when it comes to running conduit. You may be familiar with what metal conduit is that will have the high voltage wires in your home or your business running everywhere. But the thing is with some of this speaker wire and signal cables and the HDMI cables, they have a tendency to be a little bit more fragile. So you don't really wanna be running those through the metal conduit and pulling them over the sharp edges. And that's why it's nice to use this. So this is electrical non-metallic tubing or called ENT tubing for short. You may also hear of people calling it Smurf tube because it usually has this blue color. So advantages of using the ENT conduit. One, there are no sharp edges. You can see even on the connectors here, everything is nice and smooth inside, which makes it a lot easier, one, for running the wires, you don't get snagged on anything, and two, you don't end up hurting any of the wires. Another advantage, this stuff is very light. It's not like heavy metallic conduit, and it's very easy to bend as need be in order to get it in different locations for your install. This stuff can be fished through a ceiling or if you're above ground level, you could run it through the floors or through the walls, lots of different options. And what I usually like to use this for is when you're running multiple different speaker wires or signal wires. I'm mid build here, so things are obviously messy, but just as an example for the tube, if you have a location that you need multiple speaker wires to run to, and you don't wanna do several individual runs, it's a lot easier to have the Smurf tube ready to go. That way you can feed the wires through and you're not having to re-guide everything. And using the ENT tube here is a situation that you would want to use the fish tape as your fish tape can flex and make its way through the line. Now I mentioned how using the string was especially handy for when using conduit. And the reason for that is what you can do is you can run your conduit and you know, this obviously assumes that you have a little bit more open area to work with running the conduit. But what you can do once you get the conduit ran, instead of running a fish tape, you can take this poly line and you can attach a plastic bag to the end, just a typical grocery bag, and you kind of stuff it in the end here. And then on the other end, you can use a shop vac. So this could be a really nice long line and you attach the shop vac and what it's going to do is it's going to quickly suck that bag through and it's gonna bring the string along with it. So now you would have the string at the other end and you can tie your string and pull the cord through. Now, another really big tip here, and this is a mistake that I see people making all the time. Let's say that you need to run multiple speaker wires. You don't know the length of the speaker wire that you need to run, so it wouldn't make sense to cut a bunch of speaker wires and run a bunch at once. You wanna run each run individually, that way you can cut it down to the exact length that you need. Now the mistake that people will make is let's say that they've already run their line from one room to another and they secure their line to the speaker wire. The mistake they make is they'll pull the speaker wire, right? So now they have their speaker wire terminated at the speaker and that gets this string out of the way because they've used it to pull the speaker wire and they can now cut it at the spool. The mistake that they made is now when they need to run another speaker wire, they have to refish the string back through to grab the next run of wire. 
The way to solve this problem, and it's part of the reason that I have this loose string right here, whereas I already have string up in the ceiling here, the solution is that each time you pull the wire, you also pull a new length of string. So bear with me because I know I'm doing a lot of talking with my hands here, but let's say this is the room we're taking our wire to, and this is the room where our wire is originating. What you're gonna do is you're gonna run your line. You're going to attach the line to your wire, but not only pull the wire, you're also going to set your wire container in here next to your wire spool. You're going to attach this to the run of wire that's going along with it. And what that has now done is now that this wire has been used to pull a string, you now have another string that is ready to go for the next length of wire. And in case you're wondering, you don't have to pull a new length of string every time. As long as you're doing the same distance run, you could take this original string, take it back in this room and reuse it. So you really only need two lengths of the string that are the same length to make multiple wire pulls. As far as the different connectors go on the ENT tubing, you have couplers, which is used if you make one cut short and you need to attach two different pieces together. You also have these style of connectors, which one end the conduit pushes into, and then once you knock out these knockouts, on the ENT box, you can push through, and I actually don't like this one as much because if you need to pop it out for any reason, it's super hard to do so. I like these a lot better, they're threaded. And then they use a typical metal conduit locking nut in order to lock those on. Now another big tip on things to look out for when you're running all these wires is you want to understand the difference between what's called old work J boxes and new work. Now they make all of these boxes in both metal and plastic. In this case, I didn't have any of the plastic new work boxes, but what new work means is if you're literally framing out a house, you know, building a house from scratch, there's no drywall, or if you're, you know, renovating a room and there's no drywall, if you have access to the studs, you're going to be using new work work J boxes, which will pound into wood. You can secure them with a couple of screws and they're rigidly mounted within the wall. But if we already have a bunch of drywall and everything up, we wanna use what are called old work pieces. Old work basically meaning the room is currently existing, it's all drywalled and we need to add these boxes. Now there's a ton of different options, sizes you can get, and definitely check out the building codes where you're located. A lot of times with plastic, you're only going to be using it with low voltage wires. And this here is an example of what's called a low profile J box. So you can sneak this into a really thin wall. Another option is these, we'll be using these in our example. And these are strictly for low voltage type connections, like the connections we'll be using for our speaker and signal wires. Now the way these old work boxes work is we're going to first cut out a hole in the drywall for them. On these particular ones, you'll notice that there are four little holes in the corner. And the reason for that is when you push it up against the wall, you can take a pencil and you can draw in each of those different holes and then you connect the dots and that's gonna give you the perfect size hole cutout that we need to make. Then once these are in the wall, we're just going to use a screwdriver and we're going to screw this clockwise. And what happens is this little leg is going to flip out like this, which will lock it to the drywall. And since it's a screw, this leg is going to sandwich this gap here and tighten on the drywall. So I've already made my hole here in order to run the wire. And obviously there's a couple of things that you should probably do before you cut a hole. First is you wanna use a stud finder to make sure that there aren't any studs in the way of where you're cutting this hole. In my instance here, there's a stud right here. So I made sure it was out of the way, plenty of room for this low voltage bracket. Now my plan for this particular wire is to come from the ceiling down inside the wall to this. There's a couple of things that can make this difficult. Number one being that there's insulation in this wall, so we're definitely going to want to use our fish rod. The other thing that can be a pain is what's called a fire block. When they frame out the walls with the studs that we can find with our stud finder, what they will do about halfway up the wall is they will actually run a stud from left to right. Let's see if we can find it. It's right here in this case. So literally there's a piece of wood going here, and here, and then there's a piece of wood between the two. 
As you can imagine, the problem with that is obviously that's going to block our fish rod from going up through the wall. What you can do in this case, and they have these at local hardware stores, this is a flexible drill bit. You can see the tip of it, that allows it to kind of self start itself inside the wall. And since it's flexible, you can obviously work it up through the outlet hole. In the meantime, for my application here, I'm going to use my fish rod and I'm just going to use the hole attachment, which I'm going to attach a piece of string before I try feeding it up through the hole. And another good tip for you guys is measure out the distance that you should have to go from the hole up to where you should be able to access your string and then mark out that distance on the rod using a piece of electrical tape. That way you know if you hit something with the rod, you're probably hitting the top of the ceiling and that you've gone far enough that you should be able to see the top. So here I am fishing everything through. That gives me access to the string at the top and I can pull that through. And then of course, that's the hard part. Now that I have a string at the top and the bottom, I can easily attach that with electrical tape to my speaker wire and pull it down through the wall. Now, what if you have to go through a wall, in other words, through the studs? If you have to go through maybe just one stud, that's where you could use that flexible drill bit option that I talked about. Another good idea, and it's the reason that I left the lower baseboard off when I was redoing the trim work in here, is sometimes you can just run a wire behind the trim. Redoing trim is easy enough. I won't have to do that in my situation, but just another idea. If you are doing a home theater above ground, in that case, it's a good idea to come through the floor, run your wiring underneath the floor in an unfinished part of the basement, and then come back up through in a wall cavity. Another tool that you definitely want to have on hand when running all the different speaker wire and all the different signal cables and HDMI cables is this kind of staple gun here that uses these cable mounting staples. They make these staples in different sizes depending on the wire or cable that you're running. And what's nice is you can staple them while the wire is in position. It's not like you have to do a staple and then feed the wire through it. Instead, you can hold your wire in place and then secure it in place using that staple. Are there any other tips or tricks that you would like to add? Be part of the community and let us know. Next time you're doing research or if you need help picking out home theater gear, definitely check out our project sponsor, Crutchfield. You can learn more and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link down in the video description. More home theater and car audio content coming soon. Thank you guys for watching.